Hey friends, if you've ever wanted to create custom, really compelling sounding edits right on the spot with just a flick of a wrist, you're in luck. Check this out. Cool, so in this ongoing series where I'm leading up to the live performance and live looping with Ableton online course that I'm going to be launching in the first week of October, in this video we're going to explore one of the things that's kind of difficult about making electronic music or even performing it. Usually creating compelling, unique, and awesome sounding edits takes a long time. If you're in the studio, you're probably messing with a bunch of automation curves and you're sitting there for hours clicking your mouse, or when you're on stage you're kind of limited to, you know, really basic effects such as filter sweeps and things like that. What I've developed is a system where you can use one MIDI CC, either in the studio or on stage, to create completely novel and unique effect edits every single time you flick that control. That's all you gotta do, all right? Let's check it out. Okay, so I just have this really super basic drum beat. Sounds like this. Right, so this drum beat is very basic and it repeats very quickly. So if I was just playing this for an audience, they would get kind of bored with it really quick. But if I use my custom effect setup that I've got set up here, I can get a lot more mileage, okay? I can, I can get a lot more interest generated out of a small snippet of audio. For example, check it out. So let's go ahead and look at what the innards of this thing are. I've got a beat repeat, okay? I've got a vocoder, I've got a delay, kind of used as a comb filter. I've got a reverb, and I've got an auto filter, okay? Those are the uh, effects that are making different sounds every single time. And then at the end, I've got a drum bus and a multiband compression. Now, the, the idea behind these is these are just kind of taking whatever nonsense I throw at them and kind of homogenizing it and making it so that they're listenable. Uh, so that, you know, in case an effect goes haywire, these two effects will tame whatever nonsense that's created. But anyway, what we're really looking at is right here. Now check this out. On this audio effect rack, okay, I've got the ability to randomize these controls, okay? And if I turn the knob, the CC knob all the way down, everything is bypassed, right? So all the way off, and then, right, and then, Now let's get into the nitty gritty and build one of these from scratch, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just close this one down and we'll use a maybe the crossfader or a different slider. It doesn't matter, okay, at the end of the day, what CC you use, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this crossfader for this, all right? So I'll keep that one bypassed and I'm gonna build another audio effect rack by starting with a beat repeat, okay? So why start with the beat repeat? Well, essentially the beat repeat will just grab a snippet of audio from what it's already listening to, right? So this is a very useful thing. So the first thing I wanna talk about is that the beat repeat essentially will get triggered eventually by moving a slider or a knob, all right? So maybe the first thing I'll do is I'll show you that. So I'm gonna to go to my MIDI mapper and I'll turn on my MIDI mapper and I'll click on repeat. Then I'll move the slider, right? And then we can see that I have mapped CC number nine to this slider right here. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it engage very quickly. So how do you do that? At this point, see how it says 64? What that means is that the travel of the slider would have to be at least halfway before the repeat gets turned on, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna have it so that it turns on very quickly. You can see the numbers go up on this Fader Fox UC4. I want it to basically turn on almost instantly. So I'm gonna choose, yeah, I like to choose four. Four is a good number to choose. Now. I'm gonna set the beat repeat up. So essentially I wanna turn it to insert mode first of all because I wanna bypass the uh, input audio and I just want the repeats to play. And then I'm gonna turn the chance all the way down. So essentially I now have control of when it does repeats. So as it stands right now, if I listen to this beat, I'm only gonna get 16 Now that's not very interesting, is it? Because if every single time I just do 16 repeats, that's always gonna sound pretty similar. So another idea or another design around this setup that I wanna show you, I wanna make it so that no matter what I do, every single time I slide this slider this way, I get a different result, right? So one thing I can do is I can use variations. So what does variation do? This is actually a really basic thing. If I set the grid somewhere arbitrary, let's set it on 1 8th, for example. If I turn the variations up to two, that means that I could go up to 
a 12th division or down to a 6th division because the variation has moved 2 degrees. But I like to leave it up to like, you know, 5 or 6 or something so that I can move all around. That means essentially what the variation does is it changes the grid position every single time repeat is turned on, right? So it adds some what? It adds some variation, right? So now check this out. So you can see every time I slid this way, I get a different beat repeat, right? So that's a really, really big part of this design, right? Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and group this into an audio effect track, and now I get my macros, right? So the beat repeat isn't gonna get any macros, but some of the other effects will. But the beat repeat will always be the first in the chain. Cool, so let's go ahead and add a delay. So of course, I've gone over delay a lot on this channel, and of course I go really, really in depth with it in my courses, but essentially delay can be used to make all kinds of different effects. But in this situation, we're gonna be making kind of like a feedbacky comb filter kind of sound. So I'm gonna turn the sync off, and I'm gonna to try to stay under 80 milliseconds for the time, because check it out. Here's without the delay, and with it on, Especially if I have the, the feedback turned up pretty high, we can get these really interesting kind of like tones that happen with the delay, right? So I'm also gonna turn off the filter, but I'm definitely gonna leave it on repitch mode and we'll come back to this later. But essentially what I now wanna do is I want to map some of these parameters to this audio effect track. So I'm gonna hit map and I'm gonna hit the dry wet and I'll hit maybe the delay time, okay? so. I wanna constrain these now. When you turn on map here, this is different than MIDI mapping. This is mapping to the macros of this audio effect rack. So when I hit map here, I can see what I have mapped up here in the top left-hand corner. So of course, I don't want the dry wet to go maybe above 50. That'd be too much. And I don't want the delay time again to go above 80 milliseconds, right? It's what we just talked about before. So now, every single time I hit random, I get a different delay effect. right? This is just, this is part of this design, right? So now that I've got this set up, I'm going to turn this delay off and we're going to keep working on other effects. Let's grab a classic auto filter and we'll put that up here. And auto filter is great because it has an LFO already built inside of it, right? So I'm going to put it on high pass mode. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to map the filter frequency. And then I'll map the shape of the LFO to another. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna actually cycle through different shapes of the LFO. And another thing that I'm gonna do is I'll get out of mapping mode. I'll go ahead and collapse, collapse this delay down and this beat repeat down for now. I'll get out of map mode and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to sync this LFO. Let's sync it to something slower like a half or something like that. And of course I need to turn up the amount a little bit to get that filtering. Now, of course, the filter is filtering too much, right? So we need to go back to our mapper and we need to constrain the ranges again. So we're gonna constrain this range maybe down to, yeah, at the very most, I want this thing hovering around 300 hertz, right? And then of course, with the LFO shape, I'm gonna leave that wide open. And of course, there's no way to change that. But as you can see, every single time I hit random, we're changing our LFO shape right here, right? So now we get. Now, it's kind of hard to hear this auto filter effect, and that's the reason for the next effect, using a reverb. So I'm gonna grab a reverb and put it between the beat repeat delay and the auto filter. Now, in this situation, I'm going to go ahead and map the dry wet control to never go above 25%, okay? We're gonna keep it low, all right? And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna look at some other parts of this effect. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna put it on maybe high mode, and I'll put it, the size at around 10 because I kind of want more of like, like white noise kind of type of reverb so it sounds like this instead of this more diffused reverb right so I'm trying to keep the size low and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to map the reverb tail to this macro now at the moment of course it's going to go all the way up to 60 seconds we don't want that let's say that yeah one and a half seconds is the most 
And so lastly, we want to make sure that the dry, that the dry wet of the reverb is down to 25% or something like that, because we don't need the reverb to while out too much. I'll go ahead and turn up the resonance of this filter a little bit too, but let's go ahead and listen to this now. The reverb is playing into the auto filter. Now listen. Do you hear how much more obvious the auto filter sound is? That's because we're making a little bit of reverb tails on these drum hits and then the filtering afterwards, right? Okay, so I'm gonna close these down and then the final effect I'm gonna reach for is a vocoder. And maybe I'll put this between the beat repeat and the delay. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use it on noise mode, right? So when you listen to this, you get this. Vocoder is a really interesting effect in that you can kind of do some like quick drum replacement with, with noise. In this situation, what I want to do though is I want to mess with the dry wet and I want to mess with the format. Listen to the format as I change it. And so you get this kind of cool sound. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and map that to this knob and then maybe dry wet will never go above 60% or something like that. Okay, cool. I just turned on the delay. Now all the effects are active. All right, so I'm gonna hit random. Now, that's sounding pretty different every single time I hit random, but the real secret here is to get some clever MIDI mapping going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to, to MIDI mapping. Now this, is, now this pertains to physical controllers in the real world, right? So now whatever CC I want, I can map to different controls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map one to the on-off switch of this entire effect rack, right? So now that I've done that, I've just moved the controller we can see up here that we're doing that 64 to 127 thing, meaning that I would have to take this crossfader and get past halfway before it would turn on, which we don't want. We want this to be all the way down at, yet again, four, okay? So now that that's set up, check this out. That's cool. So now I can get different beat repeats because my beat repeat is having variations on it and the, and the effects get engaged, right? but it gets even better than that, okay? What the next thing I wanna do is I wanna MIDI map the actual random control with the same control. Once, once more, if I move this now, I've mapped this to the randomized control. Now, the randomized control is interesting in that you don't have a range associated with it. Essentially, it's just a button. So when I move this at all, notice my randomization will happen every single time I move it. Now notice that I have to get past halfway for that randomization to actually occur. Now here's the thing, I could go into the UC4 and change the way the CC works, but I actually think this is an interesting thing. What'll happen is, is that when this is totally off, I get no randomization and of course I don't get any effects. But the moment I turn this up past here, I get a different variation on my beat repeat and I've locked into some setting on my effects. But once I pass halfway, I can get this kind of scrambled different sound. So let me show you what I mean when I go ahead and perform with this. Cool, so if you're enjoying this video and you're enjoying my teaching style, I'm really excited to be putting out this live performance and live looping with Ableton Live course. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Essentially in this course, I'm gonna be divulging all 15 years of experience that I have using Ableton on stage, syncing with other musicians, syncing all of your external and internal gear, using MIDI controllers from A to Z, all kinds of stuff. So if you're stoked about that and you wanna learn more, just go ahead and slap your email up in this email list and I'll send you an email when the course gets released. Cool. Let's get back to it. What's cool about this is that I know that the effects are locked halfway through the slider travel, right? So this is locked right here. This is always gonna be the same effect. But once I get past here, I'm gonna get different ones. Now remember before when I was telling you about the delay and the fact that I'm using repitch mode? What's cool about this is that as I scramble the delay time, we're gonna get kind of a slight little scratchy sound between each one of our effect edits, right? So it goes And one thing I can do to emphasize that is open the delay time up a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go back to my mapping and I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna look at the actual delay time here. And we're gonna crank this up maybe that high. So now take a listen to what happens when I'm scrambling between these different effects up here. Right, you can hear that. Now if I were to change this over to 
fade or jump mode, let's go ahead and go to fade mode. You'll never hear that kind of scramble effect. It's really, it's really fast and really instant and really accurate, which maybe is what you want. Now this is a super powerful thing to do on stage, right? I have the ability to simply just get a random effect every single time I move my finger and I know that it's synced to the clock and I know that it's going to be tamed because I have my trusty drum bus and multiband compression at the end getting any crazy or wacky kind of sounds that are happening out of here, right? So, but what I want to talk about is that sometimes this can be kind of jarring, right? <laughs> if you're on stage and you have no way to anchor this musically. So what I have here is I just have this little synth line here that's kind of just repeating itself over and over again. And this is the riff. Right? So it's easy to remember. You know what it is. So the thing is, is that this is kind of like an anchor, right? And so now what I can do is I can edit my drums, but you always have a place to go musically, right? You always have a place for the ear to hang out in. Let me show you what I mean. What I really enjoy is that if you're gonna go as far as to use like beat repeat or things like that, I think they work much better in the track than on the master bus. Because if they're on the master, it's like everyone's heard the sound of an entire song repeating. But what sounds a little bit better is when you have different tracks repeating at different times so that you're anchored to the song. So conveniently, I have made this audio effect rack as well as that original one that I made before, right? So what I could do is that this one's living on the synth track now and this one, that I have crushed down here is living on this track. So all I gotta do is copy these two effects here, put them at the end of the wavetable, and now I have a situation where I can put random effects on the drums with this slider and random effects on the synth with this crossfader. So check it out. So yeah, you can see how much more interest you can generate from extremely short musical material. These are like 10 second loops at the very most, but I can get almost a minute of interest generated just by using this tiny little performance element. And I should also say that if you ever want to capture what you've made, all you got to do is just go to uh, an audio track and choose resampling, and then you can capture these edits and use them inside of your compositions inside of Ableton. It's really that easy. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If this is your kind of thing, please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Thank you.